Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Silver Marches uh, channel. Uh, this is a channel which I created to uh, so I can stream my D&D sessions live. Well, some of them, because uh, I play both live with the Fantasy Grounds. And I also have a local group here in Oslo, Norway, uh, where we're actually rolling real dice. So uh, the campaign I'm running is uh, Descent into Avernus, which I've dubbed uh, A Tale of Two Cities. And uh, because of some serious technical problems with uh, session one, uh, I wasn't able to uh, stream it as I would. So that's why I'm creating this video for you to show you uh, an overview of uh, the beginning of the campaign and uh, what happened to the players in Elteril. So I'm starting uh, my players in Elteril because I want to have a, I want the story to have a bigger impact uh, on the players and uh, their experiences in the campaign. And it, uh, it actually doesn't make sense to start the players in Baldur's Gate uh, as uh, written in the campaign book, because yeah, basically they have no tie to the city and why should they care? So we are <laughs> starting in Eltrill because I'm a uh, masochist. I hate my players. Uh, we are starting in Eltrill and um, I'm using the uh, Alexandrian remix uh, for this campaign or I'm following it loosely. I'm taking a lot of ideas from it. Uh, I have also tied the characters' backgrounds to the city. Uh, and uh, the players are actually inside the city when it falls. I'll get back to that in a second. Okay, let's start with the beginning. Uh, so uh, we are in Elturil on the 50 years anniversary of the Companion. There is a big festival going on and the Elder Raven Guard arrives uh, in the morning with the soldiers from the Flaming Fist. <clears throat> now, I have, a, uh, I have given the players access to the history of Eltrill. I have uh, uh, whitewashed it for the players, and uh, this is the story as it goes according to the Alexandrian remix, because uh, the history in the book actually doesn't make sense. There are some controversies in there, which I'm not going to get into. So this is my uh, whitewash version of the history of Eltrell, which the players have. I also have uh, created the uh, history of the Helleriders, also according to the Alexandrian remix. I, I gave the, uh, all the players uh, PDF files uh, on this, uh, which I shared on, uh, on Google. Uh, I know that some of the players have read it and some haven't. That's okay, but it's there. And I also have the uh, order of the companion, the history of the uh, order itself, with information about the Creed Resolute, some images and stuff. Here's the oath as well. And there's also a history on the reign of vampires 50 years ago. And in this adventure, uh, Nadja Belandi, uh, is the important person. Okay. Uh, let's talk about some new backgrounds I created for my players. Uh, there is one background for the Hell Riders, if uh, any of the players wanted to play a Hell Rider. And I allowed them to play uh, like soldiers, rangers, it could also be clerics, paladins in the Hell Riders. And um, there is also a background for the Order of the Companion. And the last background I created is um, if any of the players wanted to play a Flaming Fist Envoy, which arrived in the morning with the other Raven God. 
uh, if anyone chose that background, they would have uh, access uh, to knowledge about Baldur's Gate, uh, stuff like that, which could be cool. Yep, so that's the backgrounds. Okay, so let's take a look at our players. The first one I add is uh, Fist. He's a tabaxi rogue arcane trickster and sorcerer. Uh, years ago, a platoon of Hellriders came across a pilfered caravan near the Reaching Wood. In a basket among the many dead, they found a small child, his mother, father, slain. The Hellriders brought the tabaxi child to the Layflower, a pleasure house in Elturil, and gave him to Vina, one of the young girls working there. Vina raised the tabaxi as her own, and they bonded. When the companion went dark, Fist saved Vina and her unborn child from certain death. So that's the first character. Uh, when we start, uh, when we started the first session, uh, Fist was at a wedding uh, in the garden in Elthril, close to the Maiden Leap, a waterfall. And uh, we went through this uh, this uh, wedding where uh, William Doe, an elderly priest of Latander, prepared uh, the wedding of the young couple, uh, Vina and her beloved Bertram, and uh, Fist. Uh, is attending the wedding on Vina's behalf. And I also put in the unity prayers in the uh, in the start of the campaign to show the players how important the companion is for the city. So William Doe starts to recite the unity prayer. Before those here gathered, we give thanks to the companion, whose light gives us the bounty of the fields and shields us from the dark whose embrace is a blessing upon those who have chosen to share their hearts and souls on this beautiful day. And they, uh, uh, the two gently hold their hands and looks in each other in, in the eyes and recite their vow. Below the sacred light of the companion and in the eyes of those here today, I commit to you now and always until we return to this endless light. So the reason why I'm doing this is to teach and show uh, the players, uh, the meaning of the companion. Let's take a look at my uh, second player. And that's uh, Rosbar Dapple. Rosbar is a uh, rock gnome, candle keep wizard. Rosbar is a fast talking, wheeling and dealing cook from Eltrill who dreamed about starting his own food empire. That dream and the dream ended when his wife Daphne let, left him after he spent all his money on the fee for the wizard academy in Candlekeep. In Candlekeep he trained under Archmage Silvira Savikas and learned how to bend the weave to his will. He journeyed back to Eltril for the 50 years anniversary and met his son Remus. When the companion went black he lost his son in the crowd and have no knowledge what happened to him. Let's take a look at what happened in the beginning for Aspar. So Raspar Dapple, he is in the garden with his son, which he has met after two years of silence. And they're having this conversation and uh, and his son went, goes down to buy some beer when disaster struck and they are separated. Okay, let's take a look at uh, my third player, which is uh, Valdis Netherspire. She uh, is played by Kina, who is actually drawing uh, some of these uh, figures. She's an amazing artist. And uh, her name is Silent Raven Art, if you want to, uh, if you need something drawn. Valdis is, uh, Valdis is a feral tiefling grave cleric. Wallace is born and raised in Eldrill. She was sent to Candlekeep to train as a acolyte of the Raven Queen. Her mother and father lived through the reign of empires in Eldrill 50 years ago. But she is the only one in the family who actually have wings. When Eldrill disappeared, Wallace saved her mother, but her father and two siblings vanished with the city. So she returned to Eldrill. Uh, for the 50 years anniversary and had this uh, beautiful picnic with her family when uh, the companion went dark. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, 
my fifth player, which is Godrus Brightspear. He is a Scourge Asimar, out of Redemption Paladin. Uh, Godrus is from the famous Brightspear family in Eltrell. He is spoiled, rich, and prefers woman, wine, and song before any duties. He is also a direct descendant of Haruman Brightspear. Mm -hmm, interesting. Who rode into Avernus with the mighty High Rider Olantius. Godrus was forced into the Order of Companion by his father, Sigmund Brightspear, a now retired Hell Rider General. He took the Creed Resolute the day the Companion went dark when we started to play. Then you have um, the fifth character, which is Dion. He's a human ranger Twilight Cleric. This picture is also drawn by Kina in Silent Raven Art. So Dian was uh, raised in Eltrell as an orphan. He was taken in by the Order of the Companion when he was 12 years old. Uh, the Order soon realized that he was more useful as a scout. And later in life, he found faith and became a, a acolyte of Seluna. On the day the Companion went dark, Dian was bitten by a vampire and is now having terrible nightmares and certain cravings. So this is very interesting. This is uh, during the initiation of uh, Godrus and Dion. This is where I, I got to spread some, uh, some lore. So Godrus and Dion has, and three other ordinates have been preparing for several days for the ceremony. Uh, that will make them true companions. Uh, there are important persons in the audience. They were all gathered in the High Hall in Eltrell uh, during the, when the initiation starts in the morning. The room is filled to the brim with nobility and other important persons. The two important persons in the room is High Overseer Tavius Creek, which I have a image of here. Let's see, NPCs, go. That's Tavius Krieg. And uh, the other important person is Alder Ravenguard, which is the envoy which arrived in the morning in Eltrell. Uh, and uh, Godrus' uh, mother was there, Avelina, along with his father, Sigmund. And uh, actually, uh, Peter, Godrus' brother, was performing the initiation. Uh, to support Dion, uh, since he is an orphan, he had uh, Rhea Mantleborn, which is Dion's best friend. Uh, so Dion and Rhea Mantleborn has known each other since they were 12 years old. And she's a hell rider. Peter, a cleric of Torm, comes forward and they all bend knee in front of the altar to Torm the True. On the altar is a massive gauntleted hand made from beautiful polished teakwood. It's holding a bright glowing gem representing the companion in the sky above you. It's difficult to look into the gem. On a pedestal to your side is the Creed Resolute, a book and lengthy document proscribing and prescribing various courses of actions that are right and proper for a knight. And of course, the oath itself. And then Peter, uh, Godrus' brother, starts the initiation. <clears throat> and I have written a uh, like a speech uh, he gives to the audience and those who uh, is coming with companions. Fifty years ago, the High Watcher of Helm, Nadja Belandi, discovered that High Rider Klavi Kaya was a vampire, and thus the reign of vampires began. Many of you here remember those long nights when death was clawing at your doors. Who can forget the High Harvest slaughter when the undead broke into the High Harvest Temple and slaughtered over 200 innocent souls? In the end, you did what the, uh, you did the only thing what was left to do. You prayed and you cried. A city of 30,000 souls prayed to the gods. They prayed to Torm the True. They prayed to Helm the Watcher, Lathander the Morning Lord, Amanautur, and Seluna the Moon Maiden. Some even prayed to the Raven Queen and Kelemor, Lord of Death, so that their passings would be eased. 
The next morning, on this very day, the second of Elasias, in the year 1444 of the Daily Reckoning, our gods delivered us from evil. A bright sun appeared in the sky above Elturel, burning away all evil with its divine light. My friends, let us all kneel and bless the companion with the unity prayer. And again, the, everybody in the room kneeled and uh, said the uh, unity prayer again, just like in the wedding. After the prayers, everyone rises and Peter turns to Dion and says, says are you ready to heed the creed? And Dion was and uh, then say the words. At this point, uh, it was important for me that the players actually uh, Let's see, they actually read the creed resolute out loud, the oath. For those of you who knows the Alexandrian remix, uh, you will know that this oath is very important for the story. And then he uh, welcomed Dian uh, of Eltugar as a faithful and loyal brother in the order of companion. And uh, may you always walk in the blessing and never stray from the path. Today your watch begins. There was a lot of cheering and whooping. Then it turned to uh, Godras and went through the same uh, um, thing with him. And uh, Godras as well read the oath and uh, became a true companion. So that was the start for my players, where they all started. No, none of my players knew each other uh, in the beginning. And then disaster struck. And the normal procedure is for um, the high observer of uh, of Elturel uh, to give a speech uh, this morning. And that speech was uh, supposed to be coming from Tavius Krieg. But uh, so the bell starts ringing in the high hall, signaling everyone that the events is about to begin up in the garden. Everyone cheers and focus on the stage, looking forward to the high observer speech. Uh, the entertainment, the music, and at the end of uh, the show, there would is normally going to be some massive fireworks over the high hall. So many of the important representatives are up on the stage, sitting on chairs, and in front of them are two larger chairs with comfortable firsts. Uh, you can see Archduke of the Raven Guard in one of them, but the one for the high observer, Tavius Krieg, is empty. And uh, those who are attending the garden in the garden could see that uh, the, uh, the Archduke was looking confused around him, talking to a representative from the government, which shakes his head and lifts his shoulders, holds out his hand. So something is uh, not right up there. And you can see that some of the priests on the stage are also discussing something. They're obviously confused. Then one of them, the old priest, William Doe, moves up to the altar and says the unity prayer again. Um, but then a dull thundering sound suddenly emanates from the companion and everyone turns to look at the sky. You all feel a sudden drop in pressure. You realize that there are no birds or wind. The silence is deafening as the city holds its breath in shocked expectation. Day turned to night as the companion's color shift to black. Then you are all hit with a powerful blast of wind that throws everyone to the ground. A few seconds pass and the now black orb starts becoming wreathed with green crackling energy as lightning shoots through the air and strikes the city with increasing frequency. The earth starts shaking and rumbling as deep chasms rip open and swallows people and entire buildings. A chorus of horrifying screams fill the air as 30,000 souls cry out in anguish and horror. Lightning starts hitting the buildings and streets, turning dozens, dozens of people into, into ash. So I created a small story for each of the players, what, what was happening during this apocalypse. So Fist, as you remember, was in the wedding with his best friend, Wina. With an earth-shattering sound, the ground below you start heaving and cracking into a dark ravine. A lightning hit the willow tree beside you, turning it ablaze. People are screaming as they fall, start falling into the ravine. Vina falls into the ravine with a scream. 
in the burning inferno you can see that her fall is stopped by some massive roots from the lover which is the tree she clings to one of the roots screaming her lungs out bert is thrown to the ground and is knocked out what you do so here uh, fist uh, roll an acrobatics check to climb down to uh, try to reach vina and um and um uh, but uh Vina didn't make the acrobatics checks and she started falling down. And then one of the roots cracked and they both fall, fall down this crack. <clears throat> I'm going to explain why it's important that they fell down. That's actually what saved their lives. So Dion. Dion. Here's what happened to Dion. You had no idea on how you get, got out of the Acolyte, which is a tavern in, uh, in Elturel. A lightning ripped open the roof and barbecued everyone on the second floor of the tavern. Rhea Mantle Morn was up there with several companions celebrating your initiation. You are bruised, battered, and think you have cracked a rib. The light of the companion is gone. The darkness is complete, but you hear screams everywhere. Now and then a lightning from the companion crashes into a house and turns the night into a fiery inferno. You stumble into a burning alley and there you see it. A creature from the abyss floating towards you inches from the ground. It looks like a man, like a bat with skin clawed, with uh, uh, white skin clawed wings and it stretches out a hand towards you. And you hear a strange seductive voice filling your mind. You're unable to run. The creature seems friendly. You move towards its embrace, long clawed fingers caressing your skin with soothing words. You feel safe, and as teeth sink into your neck, you hear the voice. For centuries I have waited for night to return. Come to me, my child, and share in the feast. And that's the last thing Dion remembered from that night. Okay, let's take a look at Godrus. Godrus, after the initiation, your mother and father gave you a gift, the family shield that once belonged to the famous general Haruman Brightspear. It's very old, but still in pristine conditions. It has the symbols of both the Hellriders and the companion on the front of, and on the back is an engravement with a sentence from the letter he wrote his son before he perished in Avernus. It says, ride like the wind, fight proud, my son. You're the defender, Tormessent. But you are not in a good mood. After the initiation, the watch started for you and Baon, one of the new companions. You two drew the shortest straws, so when everyone else is out celebrating, you are here guarding the Creed Resolutes. Suddenly you hear a booming sound coming from somewhere above. Perplexed, you look, both look up at the circular ceiling above you. The silence is deafening. No birds, no sound from the city. Then a powerful blast of wind rattled the building and everyone, everything turns dark. A horrifying chorus of screams rise from the city, chilling your bones. The ground starts moving and you struggle to stand. Here they had to roll the acrobatics checks. Bayon is screaming to you. We have to get the Creed Resolute out of here. Out of here. May the companion bless us all. So, uh... He grabs the book and starts running towards the door. There is a massive explosion as the circular roof is hit by lightning and collapses into the hole. Here they have to make a deck save. Uh, you hear a creaking sound as part of the roof starts collapp collapsing. In the inferno, you can see Bayon getting hit by a spear falling from the roof, nailing him to the ground through his mouth down to his belly. A sight you won't soon forget. The Creed Resolute falls to the ground in a pool of Bayon's blood. What do you do? So uh, here, Godrus decided to uh, save the book. If he didn't, if he uh, wasn't able to save it, he would. There would be some repercussions later in the campaign. The ground now starts lurching to your right. The tower is crumbling, and you fall into oblivion. So the fall actually, uh, the tower actually falls off, uh, off uh, Elturel and. Uh, down into one of the ravines and into the river. OK, 
Okay, let's take a look at Rasbar. Rasbar. Rasbar Dapple, you are standing on the hill, on that small hill as William Doe starts reciting the unity prayer. You look down and wave to your son, which have his hands full of bottles. He laughs happily and shakes one of the bottles at you. Which you will follow to the greater glory. The words of the priest of torment, and there is a booming sound from above. A thousand people turn and look towards the companion. It's so quiet. So I made the Rosper roll an arcana check to see uh, if he could figure out what was going on. And he sent some extreme powers at work as the magic weave covering Elthrell Elthre is thrown into chaos. Night hit the Elthrell as the companion turns dark, wreathed in energy. A powerful blast of wind in the city knocks everyone to, in the garden to the ground. You panic and scream as you crawl towards your son down in the grass below you, but he's gone. So here I made the Rosper roll a perception check to see, find out where his son was, but he, uh, he failed it, so he couldn't see where his son is. If he had managed at the perception check, he would know uh, where, uh, Ros where uh, his son went for later in the campaign. And then we have uh, Valdis. Now, Wallace is in the garden with her uh, friends, when, uh, with the family, picnicking when the shits start happening. So you are in the garden as well, when things go bad very quickly. And she went over to her friends, uh, which she saw uh, in the garden, and left her family. A massive crack opened between you and your parents. Several people around you fall into the dark. At the same time, you see that massive willow tree North in the garden lights up like a candle. Another massive lightning hit one of the towers in the high hall, and uh, the tower starts crumbling, falling down into the ravine. So here I rolled uh, four d20 for her family to see what happened. And uh, when I rolled, only her mother, Nevin, failed it. So Damus, Varilia, and Sirius is on the grass, uh, was being thrown to the grass and is holding tight. But Nevin, her mother, was sliding into the, the ravine. So of course, Valdis uh, threw herself in the air and flew down to save her mother. That's when the uh, uh, that's when uh, Elturel disappeared, leaving her family in the city and Valdis and her mother flying in the air above the Chiantar River. So what's important here is that everyone who fall into a crack or was flying somehow uh, actually survived. A lot of people in Eltrel fell into these ravines and a lot of people died, drowned in the Chiantar River or was killed by the fall. But the day after, uh, my players are gathered on the uh, edge of the river Chianter, looking at this massive crater where Elturel once stood, and uh, <laughs> they are confused. I think that this uh, beginning has a much better impact than uh, uh, starting in Baldur's Gate. So. Another dawn breaks, the sun rises, warming the land of Elthrugard. The birds are chirping happily, doing what birds do. The Chiantar River flows lazily towards Baldur's Gate in the west. But for those of you who survived last night, the sunrise come with a terrible revelation. Elthrugard is gone. You are hunkered down in a small provisional camp with a handful of refugees. A tarp is stretched from a small wagon protecting the cold refugees from the rain. You are all huddled together around a small campfire. A long horn is standing below a tree chewing lazily on the grass. So the refugees are Godrus Brightblade, Dion, Raspar Dapple, Fist, Valdis Netherspire, and Nevin, which is uh, Valdis' mother, which she saved. William Doe is the uh, old priest, priest from the wedding. And he also said the unity prayer at the scene uh, outside High Hall in the garden. And uh, they have Vina, which is uh, Fist's best friend. She is uh, nine months pregnant. 
And you have Dorian, a human stable boy for the companion. He uh, has a birth defect and he's limp. His mother and father are also hell riders. And then you have old Urhart, which is an old farmer. He owns the wagon and uh, the longhorn. So he has been gathering up uh, the survivors and wants to help them to Baldur's Gate. His wife Anna was in Baldur's Gate in El Terrell when the city fell. So they started traveling towards uh, towards uh, Baldur's Gate. Um, and the fine corpses of other refugees who were ambushed by bandits. Uh, there was a bandit attack. Um, Vina, one of the uh, Vina, uh, Fis' best friend, which is nine months pregnant, goes into labor. So they have to roll some medicine checks and bravery and bless and all kinds of fun stuff to save the child, which uh, which was born on the road. They also find uh, uh, they also find out that uh, Rhea Mantlemorn survived the attack, and she is uh, she have joined a small troop of Hell Knights trying to figure out what's going on. So they meet they meet uh, Rhea Mantlemorn, and. Uh, she actually rides ahead of the players uh, towards Baldur's Gate on the fifth day on the road, so uh, with the hell, other Hell Riders to find a shelter in Baldur's Gate for the players. <clears throat> this is uh, very important a bit later in the story, as you probably will find out in episode three or four. And uh, yeah, after the bandit attack, so they. Uh, Let's see. Da, da, da. Yeah, so they were attacked by some bandits on the road to uh, Baldur's Gate and defeated them. This was the first, actually, the first battle in the campaign. And um, they killed the bandits, took three of them prisoners, and sent those three uh, bandits uh, with the uh, Hell Riders towards Baldur's Gate. And you will see what happened to them uh, when they arrive at uh, the gates of uh, Baldur's Gate in episode two. So that's actually how my campaign started. Uh, I wanted to uh, start in Eltral because it's it's cooler, it's better, gives uh, uh, a hell of a lot more motivation for the players than starting in Baldur's Gate. So if you want to follow this campaign, you can uh, go to the Silver Marches stream and um, yeah, just subscribe or something. Uh, yeah, see you later.